Welcome back YouTube. Today we're going to look at my two favorite exercises for rear delts, why I like them so much and how to perform them correctly, taking into consideration your personal structure instead of having to try to copy what I show and just hope for the best with your rear delts. You see, rear delts are a muscle group that I get asked about a lot. For such a small muscle region, it seems to be a muscle that a lot of people tend to mess up by doing exactly what I just mentioned. They see an exercise on YouTube or somewhere in the stratosphere of social media and they try to copy it, only to find that it goes to their neck or their traps or their lats or maybe even their, their triceps. Today, I'm going to solve all of those issues for you with my two favorite exercises. But first, I want to know from you. How many of you struggle with rear delt training? And what are your favorite two exercises for rear delts? Drop me a comment below to let me know. And please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The past month alone, this channel has more than doubled in size, which means I can create even more free content just like this for you guys. So thank you all so much for your support so far. It is very, very, very much appreciated. So, Let's get stuck straight into it. Exercise number one is a rear delt row. Before we go into why I like it so much and what some of the different options available to you for this are, we need to talk first about what makes a row exercise a rear delt exercise versus say a lat or upper back exercise. Years ago, when I was teaching with my friend John Meadows, he'd always come back to this saying for back training. Elbows and angles. So where your elbows are traveling is going to determine what part of your back you're working and how hard you're working it. I always loved the simplicity in how he would explain concepts. He'd be able to reduce things down to their bare bones to get the message across without having to use all these fancy words and scientific jargon just to make himself sound smart. Now, Anyway, that might actually not be a revolutionary thing to you. I'm sure many of you have heard something similar in the past, but we're going to go a little bit further than this and understand the best positioning for you, not for lats or upper back, but for rear delts. In order to do this, we need to understand a little bit about what roles these different muscles play. Yes, they are all pulling muscles, but they all have more favorable positions to pull from depending on different upper arm and shoulder blade positions. For example, for lats, the ideal position is having your elbows tracking in more of an arcing motion, staying tucked in towards your sides and pulling down towards your waistline. Not necessarily back behind your torso and with not as much shoulder blade movement as you would typically see most people doing. You see, once you start pulling the shoulder blades back and the elbows back behind the torso, the tension shifts off from the lats. For the upper back, the goal is to move the shoulder blades as much as possible. As the muscles there in the upper back, they attach directly to the shoulder blades and draw them in towards your spine. This dictates an arm path that's gonna be slightly higher to wherever is most comfortable for you to get this motion occurring at the upper back and the shoulder blades. And for rear delts, well, the goal here is to move the elbows as far back behind the torso as possible to get into what anatomy nerds call shoulder extension. So all we need to do is find whatever position of your upper arm allows you to get your arm as far back on your body as possible. It doesn't matter a great deal what happens at the shoulder blade, as this position will be very similar to what you use for your upper back, but if you spend a moment trying to find this position, you'll definitely feel a difference between upper back and rear delts. Let's do it together. If you're on your phone, prop it up somewhere, and if you're watching this in a public and maybe crowded space, make sure you do this as flamboyantly as possible so everybody watches you and thinks you're a crazy person. So bring your arms straight out to your sides, which is typically, we'd probably see your arms in a typical machine rear delt fly that you see in most gyms, right? And try to pull them as far back behind your torso as possible. Now, what you'll find is, as you get to roughly in line with your torso or your body, you'll find the urge to start to bring your arms down slightly to a degree to allow for more movement to occur to get that arm even further back. Let me show that to you again. So here I am pulling my arms back in line with my shoulders. Now I've come to my side here, you can see where my elbows are tracking. 
If I try to pull this right arm here back any further, you see it physically can go back much further, but it had to drop down slightly towards the ground. Now, how much was that? It was this much. Now, you don't need to get the protractor out to measure how many degrees of abduction that is, because nobody cares. All that matters is that you've now found the ideal elbow position for your rear delts to contract along. So all we need to do now is just reverse this position and we have found the ideal arm path which we're pulling along for rear delts. Whether you use cables, dumbbells, barbells, or machines, or whatever you want, it really is that simple. But something that is very overlooked by many people. This concept was explained to me in detail by Cassim Hansen about a year ago, and it came as a big light bulb moment for me, as I'd always organically performed and cued exercises like this for rear delts, and never really understood the exact reason as to why. And it also highlights the fact why so many people struggle with rear adults, as probably the most common exercise performed for rear adults, the machine rear adult fly, puts you up into a poor position for your rear adults to be contracting. So of course, your body will use other muscle groups to perform the movement of pulling your arms behind you, because it's trying to conform to some unnatural position that you've been jammed into on the rear adult fly machine. It also highlights a big reason why so many people struggle with the development of their back musculature, but wind up growing their rear delts instead, because they're not taking this simple fact into consideration with their exercise selection and the exercise execution. And as a result, they wind up pulling their arms along a path that isn't ideal for maybe their back muscles, but is ideal for their rear delts. So they sort of grow them by accident. So anyway, to keep this on track with rear delts, what we're looking at here is any sort of rowing movement. More recently, I've been using a cable setup with a slight high to low angle, but I've gone more aggressive on the angle than this in the past, and I've also used dumbbells and machines as well. It really just comes down to what sort of stress you want to place on the body, and potentially slightly different angles may emphasize slightly different regions of the shoulder or upper back region. So mix it up every once in a while and find whatever suits you best and whatever you prefer. I do tend to gravitate more towards anything that allows for as much freedom at the grip as possible, such as unilateral handles, or simply performing the exercise one side at a time if needed. Which brings us to my second favorite exercise for rear delts, the single arm rear delt fly. The same principle applies here as with the row. You need to first get a good idea on what the ideal arm position is for you and understand that it would be different for different people based on their structure and mobility and that it might also be different side to side. This is perfectly normal, so don't freak out if you find that your elbows are a little bit higher or lower on one side than the other. This is the big reason why I like the single arm rear delt fly though. It gives you more flexibility to adjust things perfectly uh, based upon your body and structure. You can of course do this with both arms as well if you wanted to at the same time, in which case it now more so becomes a fly variation of the rear delt row, similar to how a dumbbell chest fly is a slight variation on a dumbbell chest press. There are some differences in how your joints and accessory muscles are loaded up, but we don't need to worry too much about that whatsoever. For the single arm rear delt fly, all you need to do is find that arm position that was ideal for your structure to get your arm behind your body, and then set the cable height up at an angle where it tracks pretty much straight through the upper arm through the entire motion. This might be higher or lower than what I have set up, so keep that in mind. In terms of body position, due to the way that the resistance works on this cable versus a free weight like a dumbbell or a cable row, you'll find it more or less challenging in different positions of the range of motion based upon where you stand. So if you stepped a fair way back from the cable station, the movement will be significantly more challenging overall. And as you step in closer and closer, the movement becomes easier to perform. It's like performing a drop set without actually changing the weight on the machine. And that's exactly what I like to do with these. I'll usually start with a hard six to eight reps stepped back from the machine, and then I'll take one step in as a drop set, and then I might take another step in as a final drop set to squeeze out a final few more hard reps at the end of a set. As a bonus, I like to go back and forth side to side on unilateral exercises like this with no rest. 
Two or three sets like that would be plenty to completely roast your rear delts. So there you go guys, my two favorite exercises for rear delts. I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you do have any questions at all, do drop them down below. And thank you all for watching this video all the way through and I'll see you all next time.